Hello everyone, the Snowman here, and we've got just one more major clay court tennis tournament before the start of the French Open in a few weeks. That'll be this upcoming week. It's formerly known as the Internazionale BNL di Italia, also known as the Italian Open or just Rome for short. And the draws are both out for the men and the women. On the women's side, it's a Premier 5 event. And for the men, a Masters 1000 level competition. Today, I want to look at the draw for the men for the Italian Open and uh, talk about some first round matchups and uh, who's who's looking good for Rome. And as we take a look now at the men's draw for the Italian Open, it is a loaded field. We've got 17 of the top 20 ranked players in the world playing at this event. and. The big surprise of them all, Roger Federer announced on social media this morning that he will be attending the festivities in Rome. So a lot of good players. Here in section one, we have at the top the one seed, the best player in the world right now, Novak Djokovic, who's coming off a fantastic week in Madrid where he is in the final right now. He's going to play either Stefano Tsitsipas or Rafael Nadal there. But he had a very solid week, uh, had a bye in the first round, then he took out Taylor Fritz, Jeremy Shardy, a walkover win against Marin Cilic, but... The big, the big impressive mark was defeating Dominic Team today, 7-6, 7-6. A couple of uh, tiebreakers went the Serbians' way. So Djokovic, he's in this first section. He could have to play in the round of 16, a guy who's got home country advantage, Marco Cecchinato, who busted out on the scene at the French Open last year. He was a relative unknown going into Roland Garros of 2018, just 72nd ranked in the world at that time. But an excellent clay court player is Cecchinato. Plenty of variety, not a ton of power, but an excellent shot maker. And, you know, last week in Madrid, he lost in the first round to Diego Schwartzman. But I fancy the Italian's chances in Rome. He already has a title on clay this year in Buenos Aires. I think uh, if Cecchinato meets the Joker around a 16, that could be a lot of fun. I've also got multiple dark horses in this opening section, all capable of making a quarterfinal run, in my opinion. Uh, the likes of Daniel Medvedev, who's been hot on clay, made the final in Barcelona, semifinals in Monte Carlo. We've also got Stan Wawrinka, David Goffin, Nick Kyrgios, the ultimate wild card there. And uh, Juan Martín del Potro, the seven seed who uh, had a slow start in his return to the tour, uh, losing in the second round of Madrid to Laszlo Jerry. You know, his movement was a little bit unimpressive. It's going to take some time. I saw him live this year in Delray Beach. It seems like Delpo still, you know, he, he's got to, it's going to take some time to get back to 100% fitness, but I think he's thinking big picture as long as he can be healthy for a run at the French Open. Section two now, in my opinion, up for grabs. We've got the four seed, Alexander Zverev, who's overall had a disappointing 2019 so far. Uh, made the final in Acapulco, that hardcore competition in Mexico, but just one total win between Indian Wells and Miami. Had a solid showing in Madrid then, uh, but was ousted in the quarterfinals to another young rising star in Stefano Tsitsipas. Those guys will see a lot of each other in the upcoming years. It's fun to watch them at this stage now. Uh, their head-to-head -head now stands at 2-1 uh, in favor of the Greek. But those are two players who are probably going to be playing in major finals for many, many years to come. So that was a nice appetizer for the future. But Zverev uh, at the top of this section here. We also have a couple of Argentines you should be aware of. Diego Schwartzman, always a capable player on clay. And I want to point out Guido Pella, who has had a, a really impressive 2019 uh, title in Sao Paulo, and he's 22 and 11 on the year so far. His record for most wins in a season last year, 25. He's going to shatter that if he stays on this pace. Uh, quarterfinals in Monte Carlo, though, a breakthrough year. The lefty, very comfortable on the surface, so uh, definitely watch out for him. We've also got Nisha Corey, Chilich, and Monfils, some other big names. Monfils had a really fun match against Federer in Madrid. Uh, got bageled 6-0 in the first set. I think he lost it in like 18 minutes, but we know how hot and cold Monfils can be. Uh, turned it on, ended up losing in a final set tiebreaker, uh, but he's a lot of fun. This section for me is wide open. As we continue now to look at the bottom half of this Rome draw, we'll start at the bottom of section three. Roger Federer, who maybe shocked a few people when he decided to uh, give Rome a go now. I guess he's, he's got to be happy with his week in Madrid. The body's feeling healthy. He had a couple of wins last week against Richard Gasquet and Gael Monfils. Uh, originally was only going to play Madrid and the French Open for his clay court schedule, but he looked good. Uh, also in his quarterfinal match against Team, which he outmaneuvered the Austrian for most of that match, won the first set, but team started to take over in that second set tiebreaker, uh, which he won 13-11, staved off two match points that Fed had. Uh, he's got to be disappointed with that. But overall, 
a lot of positive takeaways for Fed moving forward on the clay. I think to, to go toe to toe with the Prince of Clay that well, Fed has to be optimistic and like his chances for the French Open coming up. And then we also have Stefano Tsitsipas in this section. Uh, I'm recording this video before his semifinal in Madrid against Rafael Nadal. So sorry if uh, he comes up with a big upset there. But uh, nonetheless, regardless, uh, a very good week in Madrid for Tsitsipas beating Sasha Zverev in the quarterfinals. And then how about a couple of first-round matchups here in this section? We've got Borna Cioric against Felix Oje Aliasime. That's all about youth and power. And uh, those guys just met a couple months ago for the first time ever in the Miami quarterfinals. The Canadian one in straight sets. And we've also got a tasty matchup in Fabio Fonini and Joe Willy Sanga. Sanga, who's been battling injury and fitness issues all year long. Uh, Fonini is in great form, coming off the biggest title of his career a month ago at the Monte Carlo Masters. These two first-round matchups, it's like with Chorich and Oje Aliasime, two young, athletic Ferraris. And then with Fonini and Sanga, you got two old-school throwback Chevy Impalas. Uh, a, lot of good a lot of good things happening in this quarter. Final quarter of the draw, and we got some shockwaves here because the two best clay court players, in my opinion, uh, drawn in this same section, that is Dominic Team and the eight-time champion here in Rome, Rafael Nadal. That would be a seismic quarterfinal matchup if they met there. Um, they've been the two hottest players on clay. Rafa is 20-4 and four this year, but surprisingly, he hasn't won a title yet in 2019. Um, that could change. Uh, of course, he could win Madrid. We'll see what happens moving forward. But Team, on the other hand, he's in the, the best form of his life. Two titles already in 2019, beat Fed at the Indian Wells competition uh, in early March. And then he also won in Barcelona recently where he beat Rafa on clay. The only guy, by the way, to beat Rafa on clay in the last couple of years. So Team is going to have a great chance. I just love his, his power off of both wings, his versatility. Team is, is just so hard to, to defeat on clay. And we've got more great first-rounders in this section. Uh, Kyle Edmund against Fernando Verdasco. That is strength versus strength. Fear hand versus fear hand. Whoever can get more uh, shots on their bread and butter side going to probably have the advantage in that matchup. We also have Basilashvili versus Fucevic. That'll be a, a manly man kind of bare knuckles, vintage fist fight. Uh, very grueling physical rallies, I'm sure. But that'll be fun. And we've also got uh, a couple of Frenchmen, Gasquet and Chardy, who are going to duke it out and see who has the right to uh, likely lose to Nadal in the second round. But I'm, I'm hoping for another uh, installment of Nadal versus team in the quarters here. That series overall, Nadal leads 8-4, to four, and uh, the Spaniard has a 7-4 to four advantage on clay. Please let me know what you think about this Rome draw. Leave a comment. Tell me who you think will win this fifth Masters 1000 event of the season. But uh, it should be fun. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. And I'll be back very soon with more videos. Cheers.